Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, friends. Good afternoon, everyone. Wherever you are in this world, good morning, good evening to all of you. My name is Renz, and welcome to my first ever live streaming here on the YouTube channel, simultaneously broadcast in my Facebook account. Wow, I'm so delighted and so grateful to all the friends who supported me in this journey. Thank you so much for making me graduate to level 10, which is 1,000 subscribers. Really, my my greatness and my, my gratefulness to all of you. Thank you for my family, for my friends who supported me, especially to my friends in Singapore, Biel Santos, my friend in Macau, uh, Chinitong Pinoy, Archie, and to the rest of my colleagues and family, thank you so much for giving me this great opportunity and supporting and watching my videos. Yes, uh, I am so inspired to give a lot of videos with content. And today, since this is my first ever live stream, I would like to set, I would like to how going to launch a new segment here in the Mind Cares, which is what we call cooler waters. So cooler water is something like a fluids of ideas and insight coming from expert. So we'll be having a real talk interview with different people who are so well known in their field of expertise. And that's only here. In the mind gears, compilation, the sales tips to keep, motivations, travel, inspiration, lifestyles, and daily life activities. Welcome to Mind Gears. This is your TV, your perspective. I'd like to share with you my intro video, which I create and hope you're gonna like it. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is your TV, your perspective. Welcome to my channel. All right, so definitely, yes, it's a lovely day once again to be with you this morning, this afternoon in the Philippines. And uh, as I mentioned a while ago, this is my first live streaming via YouTube channel, and I hope it is broadcasting in my Facebook account. Yes, my name is Renz. I'll be your host. Welcome to Mind Gears. And this afternoon is just my, my advocate. It is just my intention really to invite your people to inspire. Yeah, the reason why I'll be blogging is to inspire, to motivate, and to share some ideas that, you know, a lot of people might be needing, especially in the field of sales, in the field of um, home, in the field of different industries that this kind of um, channel would just inspire and top. And this afternoon, I'm just very grateful and delighted to give you and to introduce to you my first ever guest speaker in this cooler water segment. And that is why, again, I would like to say this is cooler waters because in this channel, there'll be a lot of fluids about insights, about views, about perspective in life, about ideas that only you, that is so unique and fresh coming from these great people. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very delighted and extremely delighted really to introduce to you my first speaker, for the pilot episode of the Mind Gears here in YouTube channel. I would like to, of course, I would like to make it a point that I will be introducing him. I'll be introducing him to, in his own right, in his own honor, in his own legacy. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present to you. I need to read it, right? Our guest speaker is a management and training consultant. He is an international HR practitioner assistant motivational sales and corporate motivational coach and mentor. On top of his outstanding professional background, he is also very passionate when it comes to serving and bringing positive changes in people's lives. The viewers currently, he is the famous assistant vice president for Film Best Development Corporation, 
handling the corporate training. Please welcome in the first pilot episode, the pilot episode of the Color Minds only here in the Mind Gears, Mr. Mark Barikawa. Wow. So Mark, good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, Renz. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. And that was a very generous introduction. Parang hindi ako yata yun. The honor, sir. Because you're so humble. So, Mark, how are you today? Say hi to our viewers around the world. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening to all of you around the world. And uh, welcome to, of course, the Renz Dichet channel, Mind Gears. It's my pleasure to be the first live uh, <laughs> like yeah, guest yeah, yeah. to be with uh, Renz today. And thank you so much, Renz, for giving me that opportunity. I would All right, I'm so excited. Right my right. honor, my yeah. honor, Sir Mark. And I'm just so excited. How am I going to start the conversation? Because every time that I talk to you, every time that there is a chance for us to talk, you keep on giving me a lot of inspiration. You keep on sharing me a lot of ideas that I just got from a person like you for, for my entire career. It's just that I saw your your ideas, your your care, your concern as a unique one and very passionate, empathetic one. That is why it is really my honor also to have you here as my first guest. Now, talking about, I know we're talking about our title. I mean, our topic today would be something very in the trend, something very demanding in this time, which is thriving in this time, rather, which is all about the future of our work. Because in the previous months, we're now on the, I think we're now on the 20th week under quarantine, right, Samar? And if you still remember, before we proceed, before we fly to that a very significant topic, I want to ask you, what did you do? How was it? How do you respond to that situation during March 16 when the, when the government announced the situation of the uh, quarantine because it, uh, there is now a pandemic? Where right. was you um, one, one of the first things that I actually did, and uh, which uh, I've always been aware of what's going on, that's one of the things that I really do and uh, did a lot of research as well. When the, the news broke out in January, I knew that it was really, you know, it's just a matter of time before it gets into the Philippines. And in March, that happened actually, right? So um, yeah. the, when they sent us home on March 15, I already knew that there was, there, we will not be going back to work anymore. Right, and so um, of course it was a big responsibility for uh, the learning development team to keep supporting uh, our uh, dream builders in Phil Invest. So, so through uh, information, so we created the Viber community. Right, you you, you know that we created Viber the community for, uh, for us to be able to connect with our um, dream builders while they're in quarantine, and also helping them adjust to the new normal. Right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> It, this be, be living alone has prepared me to actually even enjoy the pandemic for that matter, okay? There's a lot of oh, things that I really did enjoy. And um, and that's one of the things we're going to be talking about today, you know, how our life has changed during this particular pandemic. So, Mark, yeah, I know, I know you're, you're smart and you're intelligent. And, you know, sometimes it's easy to respond. Our respond ability is something different, no? But uh, in that manner, do you feel stressed? Do you feel... Uh, have you struggled somehow? A little bit, a little bit. But then again, when you, um, if you're familiar with your emotions, if you know yeah. how to manage your emotions, sometimes it's just your mind playing, right? You're not actually feeling yeah. it, but it's just a matter of your mind getting those ideas, wow. crazy ideas. And then, then, of course, the influence of social media and the influence of news, right? So what I wow. do is actually I control my airtime, meaning I, I don't I don't have television in my house, by the way, for the past uh, years. Oh, I really? Get <laughs> so my access to news is basically the internet, right? The internet, yeah. Yeah. Um, I uh, browse, uh, and then I, I filter them out. I filter them out. So anything and everything that has nothing to do with uh, good information or fake news, I take that out from my, and I just fo focus on, information coming from many different fields like for example i do i am subscribed to the who i'm subscribed to unesco i'm subscribed to international news channel so that you can get all of these uh, information right about yeah. what is going on instead of not knowing what is going on and just waiting for what the government would tell us what to do so there i survived and that's amazing day, that's amazing to hear that <laughs> That's a great I journey, you know. Sometimes uh, you, you just made yourself busy. You've been more productive than ever at home, and you discovered a lot of things to do and just be updated with the world. All right, so we're just 
happy to hear that you're okay. Just, just like other people who actually made that transition were able to adapt. Okay, we're now in the stage of, you know, from the stage of coping, then we have this awareness. Then we start to, as the months goes by, we start to do the preparation. And now I think we're now on the stage that we, are, we can say that at least we're able to adapt with a situation, right, Sir Mark? We're now having this adaptation process, as you always tell me, there is always a process. And to those who are watching like right now, we're not able to adapt and we're not able to cope up still. Don't worry, it is always a process, right, Sir Mark? And I'm during the process, I noticed, Sir Mark, that uh, during the time, really the situation at home, the situations in the workplace, in the school, outside our environment has totally changed now. And let's talk about the the uh, the situations in the workplace in the in the industry right now. My God, there's two things that I've noticed that really shaken all the entire world of the uh, the corporate and even in sales or the different industries. That is where all the people were led to work from home, right? So there's a big of adjustment. And the second thing, the second wave is that of the great. Uh, so shall I say, big forces that came in during the time is the enhancement in the tribing of technology. And you will notice, sir, Mark, my God, a lot of people are growing, buying all of this. The education system will be doing the online, uh, digital, uh, distance learning. Everybody just, uh, you know, panic, buying everything to enhance and develop the, the, uh, the way that they're going to communicate to the world. And that is technology. Why is it? Why is this happening, Sir Mark? What will happen now to the future? And let's talk about the workforce and the work field. What will be the future of the world? What will happen now, or, or the scenario that will happen in the future? Give me an insight think, about this, Sir Mark. Yes, definitely. Yes. Our life, our life has changed. A lot has changed, and um, as you were explaining, people are slowly adopting to the new normal. That is actually what we call normalizing, right? Things are now normalizing. People have accepted it and then kind of look for things uh, to move forward, right, within the situation. And yes, the pandemic has actually connected us even more, right? Like we've, we've talked about it. I am more connected to my family now because, um, you know, uh, like we, we basically talk every day. Right? <laughs> Unlike when we get, the, you know, the, the actual work, right? When you're in the office, for example, you cannot just simply uh, go call your family right now. Correct. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like that's what we're going to be talking about now. So it's a question of whether we are digitally prepared, right? Mm -hmm. So the the pandemic actually has accelerated that, right? When I was um, ten years ago, I was already talking about uh, the future of work as well, right? And we're looking at this um, this one happening in the future. But what what happened was it became accelerated, right? It mm. almost happened, um, you know overnight when the pandemic happened. So I think at this point in time, we should learn how to be, uh, to enhance our digital skills, right? And one of the things, even those people who did not want, in fact, you know, certain certain companies, such as industries that did not believe in digitization had a big problem adopting, right? Say for example, in learning development, one of the things that we did is we actually had um, more learning sessions in the pandemic. Even you know, rather when we were at work, because when you the process of um, conducting programs in the past, like you you know, you have to pull out people from work the workstations, and then they go for for one day training, and you know that right. But now, yeah. um, it yeah. is frequent. It is more frequent. Like you can actually do training every day, right? You can reach out to people every day now. Yes, and like correct. in the office, you schedule it ahead of time. Make sure that people you know, um, people are free on those particular schedules. And then they join us in, right? And then one time, big time, the event is done. But now we do a series and continue, con you know, continuing educational series on many topics and everything else. And I'm glad to share with you some insights on the future of work. So, question is, are you digitally ready? So, if you may, if you may share my screen, wow. my uh, presentation. Yeah. Wow. That was a good okay. question. Are you digitally ready? Okay. Now you prepared some uh, press mat. Okay. Let's share this to our viewers. So. You also be guided and be inspired with your presentation. Okay, let me share your presentation, and I hope this will be this will help a lot of our people over here. And okay, so there we go. So are we the future of our work with Mr. Mark Barikawa? Nice question, Sir Mark. Are we really digitally prepared? Tell us more about this. 
Okay. Um, the qu see, the, the thing is, uh, a lot of people, right, already use technology, right? A lot of people use technology. In fact, yeah. as you can see in my second, uh, in this slide, no, the number of YouTube, uh, yeah. sorry, the number of Facebook users over the past three months has reached already 2.6 billion users, right? And this is, uh, um, I, I, I got the news from there. Uh, and then you can take, if you take a look at Zoom, Zoom actually, I like have, uh, I, I can see that, that 300 million, right? That's 300 million viewer, uh, users, daily users yeah. during the pandemic. And even Microsoft Teams is at 75 million daily users. So Zoom technology was, it was already there sure. prior to even the pandemic, but not too many people actually know how to use it, right? They not, did not appreciate it. And then came the pandemic. There you go. Yeah. Everybody started yeah. using and looking for, actually, there's a lot of technology as, as well, but these three here, is the most uh, used, you know, most utilized um, apps in uh, the internet right now. And that's how we keep connected. In fact, the uh, Facebook is evolving Correct. as well as a, um, as a workplace, uh, um, what do you call this? Uh, a place where people also from work talk. And you know that we do that, no? We create Facebook pages for, for, our, for, our, for people. So it's not just, just a social media platform, but it's also more than that now, right? More than that. And um, even the technology of Microsoft Teams is in Greece is already also coming up with my, well, if you're not familiar with this, everyone, Microsoft Teams now Microsoft Learn, right, feature, where there are a lot of content yeah. that you can actually yeah. learn for free, right? Okay, so next slide, please. Let's take a look at the preparation of uh, the Philippines. Now, you take a look at this. It's called the market overview of the Philippines digital landscape, right? So these figures will tell us that we are actually technologically ready in terms of moving forward into the digital world, right? Looking at a total pool population of 104 million, right, and uh, which is actually 44% urbanized. As you've, you've seen, uh, the development in the Philippines has been the growth of the urban areas is uh, really rapidly uh, moving. And yes, our company is part of that. No? We, have, uh, we have a lot of projects that's uh, urbanizing uh, the provinces. Uh, and then you've got out of the out of the 104 million, right? You have 66 million penetration or 66 percent penetration wow. of internet users. That's um, huge. It's very, it's very. A lot of, you know, I think we are the um, we are the most number of uh, online users mm -hmm. on Facebook. The Philippines is, has the most number of online users, right? Let's take yeah. a look at that. You see, you have also a number of 60, 69 million active social media users. Right, and our mobile subscriptions is even beyond the population number. That's 126 percent because, like you and me, <laughs> like you and me, we will have like what an average of uh, three mobile phones. Right? Yeah, more than uh, <laughs> correct. Um, <laughs> and then you, your our um, active uh, social media mobile users is also at 57 percent penetration. So there's a lot of people already connected in the internet. Right. Let's move to the next one, please. Next slide, friends. <clears throat> right. So here we have your device usage. It's at 88% of mobile phones, 39% on laptops or computers, smartphones, it's at 61%, and then for tablet, it's uh, 25%. And look at our average daily use, right? The average daily use uh, is at nine hours, okay? Nine hours of internet via PC or tablet, three hours wow. average. <laughs> And 36 minutes for internet and via uh, via mobile phone. You're looking at the social media at four hours and 17. And I'm sure this figure was before the pandemic, so the, I'm sure this figure is already up. You know, it went up already because of the pandemic. And like you mentioned, uh, people started buying up and uh, buying new technology, upgrading their phones so that they can really connect. Right? I myself have to change my uh, internet provider. Because, yeah, um, we need to improve, no? We need to uh, get for better providers. <laughs> correct. Because it's already, it's something that I do, I use every day now. So I need yeah. to make sure that I am totally connected, right? So looking at that, you'd have your, again, active users of 60 million, where your internet users is percentage of the, over the population is at 58%. And then you have your mobile internet users at 52.2 million. And then you have your, uh, active mobile internet users. And then of course you have your 51% internet users as a percentage of total population. So what is this saying, um, saying um, these numbers are saying? It is saying that it's really time. We're already in that particular uh, stage where 
we already accepted that the, dig the digitalization yeah. is already part of our everyday life, right? You're in fact, correct. Uh, yes. In fact, we are all connected in so many different ways now. If we cannot connect on Messenger, we connect via Viber. Like, for example, when we do our sessions, right, because we're using MS Teams and I cannot access my, you know, the other applications here. So in the background, while the event is happening, we're connecting through either WhatsApp, either Viber. Yeah. We've, doing, we've been doing a lot of international, um, international events, you know, uh, inviting international speakers, and you've seen that. No? And um, we, we use everything, every media, every way to connect. Right, so we've never imagined that happen. Right, we've never imagined that happen at all. We now <laughs> so, Mark, so Mark, I just may add, no, Filipinos say things as has this bigger penetrations, no, because Filipinos are really very adventurous, have been very risky. They have this, uh, they have this in mind that they can do everything online and they love to experiment. Am I right, sir, Mark? They just love to explore. That's very true. That's very very true. Just do it and just experiment anything they can do it just to be updated. And this yeah. number will not really lie, no? That's wow. Yeah, definitely, definitely. In fact, um, I'm very grateful that you have this particular type of show so that we can also have some content that can share ideas with yeah. right? people, you know, instead of the, so that there's another avenue for them to learn, right? Uh, yeah. Another avenue for them to learn. So let's talk about the next, uh, the next one, please. And we are now connected so, more than ever. Yeah, yeah definitely. Totally, totally. We are now connected <laughs> totally. more than ever. Everybody's a market, even in the market, you go in the farm. In the farm, you can see them while farming. There is an iPod behind the carabao. I, do you see that kind of pose? And I think yeah, everybody's absolutely. just connected. I do. In fact, <laughs> in fact, if you take a look at the... Oh yeah, this is what we call your digital citizenship. No? So we are now... Wow. Uh, um, you know, before, we only you have your nationality, of course, or you have... Um, we, we, we call about, we talk about Filipino citizenship and all of that. And now, because of the internet, it's looking like <clears throat> citizenship is no longer an issue, right? We can now connect to anyone, we can now connect to anyone. And yeah. the reason I, I call it global citizenship is because when you actually uh, try to uh, sign up on any app right now, that there's, there are two options that they use now, they, they do. Either you log in or sign up using your Google credentials. Mm -hmm. And so simply click on that. And so then you have access to your, all your information or if you, yeah, if, your Google, uh, if your Google has been set up, right? And right. of course, they, you, they also ask you now about your Facebook. If you want to, uh, to, to launch the app via yeah. uh, using yeah. your Facebook credentials. So what is this saying, Renzo? I, I was sharing with you last time. Mm -hmm. um, the, most, Facebook, uh, most of Facebook before was simply used for, you know, for social media. But Facebook has now become our identity. It has now become correct. our identity. So yeah, every time you log into anything now, it's either your Google account or your Facebook account. They ask account. your account, yeah. yeah. Are you going so, to open it with Facebook, with Google, or with or your fan page? Yeah, you're correct, sir. So most of the time, I actually just use my Google because that has been my uh, identity as well. Because my Facebook is kind of personal. More personal. Is there a risk? Is there a risk? Uh, you know, just giving all the data. I am sometimes I'm so afraid. You know, when I try to install an apps and they keep on asking Facebook or Google, do you think it is still risky? Is there a risk, sir, Mark? I don't think so anymore. Yeah, I, I don't think so anymore because yeah. of all of these uh, uh, security measures, right? Security yeah. measures are being uh, used now. So. All right. We, we, we just have to accept that. We just have to accept that that is it now. So what do we do now is we clean up our Facebook, create a mm -hmm. better, uh, you know, create a better profile. profile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Create a better profile so that, uh, and then your 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 details, right? You put in your details, create a more professional uh, profile. Right. If you're going to use this in certain in different apps, for example, right? But still, you can use, you can still maintain your personality and identity, your Facebook identity as a person, your uniqueness, Right, so yes. but again, well, you don't. There's no need for us to be afraid anymore because they've all linked together. Yeah, yeah, I think yes, and, and this is the world now, really. No, so mm. but uh, but you know, sir, if you're under the the uh, the bracket of this uh, baby boomers, no, the different types of our our generation, the generation gap, as we also mentioned, you you will notice that even these people with generation X and Y especially the baby boomers, are actually adapting. What can you say about that? Do you see them having their Facebook, their their Twitter, their Instagram? That is just so amazing. Why is it 
Why is it like that, Sir Mark? Well, for some people, for some people, they see the, you see, they're, they're forced into it. You know, yeah. they're forced into it. Whether right. they like it or not, whether they like it or not, they have to. Or else, Sir Mark, they will be left. No, they will be left behind. Right. In fact, I've seen uh, old people doing TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> that I cannot do. Do you do TikTok, Sir Mark? Do you, do, do you have TikTok? No, 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 no. <laughs> anyway, yeah, a lot of there, people there, there, really. There are other ways to entertain yourself rather than think. Okay, it's just not my preference. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on with your with your right. discussion. Yeah, I'll, see, uh, there's this um, um, thing I, I I saw this on the internet, and it's a very interesting data, right? Hmm. Because I've always been um, you know big fan of data. So if, if if you're pushing something to me, then it does not it's not backed up by data. I wouldn't believe that. So yeah. you're looking at this, um, of course, this pandemic we've seen, even the data, without even the data telling us, a lot of manual jobs are actually more at risk right now, right? So yeah. there will be a decline because you're remember- You're saying, Sir Mark, you, the, the job which is, man, there is an interve intervention of man, manually intervention, right? So right. It, it's at risk. Is that what you're yes. talking about, Sir Mark? Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So. Say it's even like for example, you know, in Japan, there are restaurants there that there are no food servers anymore. It's all full, totally fully automated. Oh right? my god! Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and then of course, uh, a lot of jobs will be changing. That's what exactly what this what this is doing, and it's changing fast. It's changing fast. So we have to adapt to that digital trend, and look at our digital skills as well, so that we become relevant. A lot of new jobs, next slide please, will be created according to Microsoft, as you can see from there. Can you check and click on my next slide please? Yeah, according to Microsoft, the great lockdown is actually not, no longer will, is already accelerating digitization. Digitization, yeah, wow. Yes, and by 20, uh, 2025, they're looking at 149 million new jobs by 2025. What it means is these jobs are not there yet. But these jobs Coming. will be accelerated because that's the way to go, right? Mm -hmm. So with this promise, with this promise, in fact, it's a very positive promise. No? It's a very promising uh, number. We can, if we lost our jobs right now, and if you can visit the Microsoft site, they, they, there are testimonies there of people who say, for example, uh, someone working in a restaurant, uh, and most of the restaurants are closed, right? Now for the, for the past six months, but because of, um, them learning new skills, digital skills, they are now employed, working from home, and very productive. Wow, and yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, that is. So, so you the, the what this what this is saying is, take a look at what these jobs are, which we will talk about in a bit, right? And yeah. then um, there's a lot of things that you can actually uh, skill yourself on. Now that you know, so we can now maximize the use of technology, our gadgets, our devices, and all that. So, next slide, please. Yeah, so Mark, uh, before I go to the next slide, we're saying that uh, even in our usual training sessions, we keep on telling our, our participants and our people that you need to invest. If you don't have the uh, the calm, if you don't have a good uh, article headset, if you don't have the light, if you don't have the gadget, you need to invest with that. Is it right, sir, Mark? Because totally. really, we're moving to this, to this uh, news that you're telling us that in the yeah. coming days, there's really a lot of opportunities now in this uh, digital world coming our yes. way. Is it correct? In fact, in fact um, it's uh, the remote working is one of the yeah. things, and you can learn new skills. Like for example, you can become an assistant, right? Yeah. Or assistant to a CEO, and your CEO is someone out there in the world. You don't really have to meet them face to face, right? <laughs> yeah, correct. So that's, that's, that's say, so another one job oh. that you can actually do is help desk. Right, help desk. Right. I'll talk mm -hmm. more about details. So you don't really, you, you just need to learn how to do that. So here are the, uh, there's supposed to be something there. All right, here are the top 10 critical software uh, jobs in the future, Ooh. right? So number one in the list is a software developer. Of course. Right, and if that you is. if you don't know that yet, it's very easy because there's a lot of content out there in the, in the internet, you can actually learn how to do that. Even Ooh. in YouTube, you can also do that now. Okay. So if you're worried, for example, that you don't have the, uh, you know, that that mindset of oh, I'm too old to learn, right? I'll talk about that at the end of the at the end of the, the discussion. Right. I'm too old to learn. If you have that kind of mindset, you will never become productive and employed during these times. Another thing that you, that that you can actually do is becoming a sales representative. 
and very i mean you, you guys are doing a great job in uh in yeah. uh, in philip invest land in yes. uh, training and recruiting a lot of our sales representatives and you have adopted the technology and it actually works right, right. remember at the beginning of the pandemic uh, most of our salespeople, of course were thinking so yes, how that's can in fact during that stage they have this biggest sales that they ever had and that's exactly. just a uh, revelation <laughs> right so it was supposed to be it was supposed to slow down our uh, our production right but it turned yeah. out that it, this became an, a bigger in fact an opportunity for people to actually sell and you know why they're able to sell rents yes why they are able to sell better now because yes we, somehow, yeah, correct. somehow yeah. the confidence online is bigger than the confidence face to face face to face yeah that's right. true so that's one, <laughs> the one comfort of their it. home they're just there to you know to just be expert experiment in their laptops and a conversation face to face with uh with a client is something like more comfortable with them and even they can have this copy with them when they're presenting sir mark that's correct right <laughs> it it it, um, it somehow made it easier to connect with our sales you know with the with our clients right yeah. and our our sales people our sales representatives became more you are confident. correct you are correct because sometimes you know they don't really have to show their faces it's just the presentation on the screen yeah right? and like when you do you know and like when you do face-to-face -face selling you have oh. to dress up yeah there right? should be a, you must develop the art of persuasions and right. the confidence you know, you know you, you, you've got to you have to dress up accordingly <laughs> look yeah. good to the client right and you see, you see the reaction of the client face to face <laughs> You don't you you and you cannot of, read the, your your flyers. You cannot read the, your documents in front of them. You must correct. memorize it within the so, mind. Exactly right. <laughs> so there. Okay. One one other thing Did is course project management. Right. So another job is in project manage uh, becoming a project manager because again there's a lot of uh, um, what do you call this? A lot of uh, collaboration tools that are being used right now. So you have to also manage um, your 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 projects. Uh, using these collaboration tools, which I will share with you in a bit as well. Of course, right. there's still the IT administrator. They're the most in-demand people, even during yeah, the I think they are. Yeah. We so lucky, sir, Mark. Now that we have actually a long time ago, IT or you know, we only hired to at least one to two IT per department, and that we have a lot of IT so actually engage to other job because and yes, there's not so much demand. But now I think they're so lucky. <laughs> yeah, you know, Renz, that that's the a lot of companies that have that mentality of uh, mm -hmm. just a simple IT support people, right? Mm -hmm. IT support people was yeah. actually lost. They were actually lost during this time, and mm -hmm. and, 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 and because you know the expertise of those people they hired are simply just support, yeah, technical support. But yeah. to come up with software, to come up with uh, programs to go, for example, live. Uh, uh, like, for example, connecting to schools, for example. Yeah. Uh, the schools, the educational system, they're not that they're not prepared because they don't have. Sometimes they only have one IT person working there. Correct. Right. So they have to consult other people now. So it becomes more expensive. But if they are prepared, then it would be easier. Right. There. I like this particularly customer service specialist. Specialist. Right. Because remember, also in our case, now in our case, and being a uh, customer service specialist is really a very good job online right because of the after sales services right, right. the 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 business the, you know the sale doesn't end once they've closed it it's the after sales that's very very important so a, a career in customer service is very very important okay it will be one of the, it's actually one I, I know a lot of my friends have converted themselves into you know they got um, they did they lost their jobs as well and so now they're oh, uh, customer wow. service specialists See, there's, mm. there's a way, there's actually a way to transition to another career, right? And besides, we are no longer in that generation, and this, this pandemic has proven that, that even, um, you know, that, that baby boomer mentality that be grateful you have a job and stay there yeah. until you retire, that doesn't work anymore, right? In fact, Correct. The, this particular pandemic showed us well that there will now be con more contractual work rather than long-term engagements. Right, but there's okay. also another, you know, another thinking. You know, there's also another thinking to keep your people. You have to engage them even more. So there will be project-based or contract-based uh, uh, um, jobs, 
but less less of the nine to uh, nine to five um, what do you call this nine to five um, transactions uh, on on those kind of jobs. And then of course we have the very popular digital marketing, which is actually very easy. And a lot of companies are now because of the digitalization, people yeah. are now um, getting the help, right? Getting the uh, uh, getting the help of people with digital marketing e expertise. Yeah. Because everything is now online, the e-commerce is now right? online. That's correct, right? Yeah. And uh, the, the, your content, right? Your digital content has to um, reach, uh, it has to appeal, right? It has to appeal to your to your clients or to your audience, okay? Correct. Or there. And then, of course, you said, like I mentioned earlier, IT support is still very, very important because you can do that in the comfort of your home. Help desk, data analyst is also one job that is going to be very in demand with Power BI and all that kind of stuff. And of course, financial analysis, and most importantly, graphic. Graphic designer, I love that, yeah. You know, so Mark, may I just uh, butt in? We, even at home, when I'm doing my job, you know, doing the webinar, you cannot, you cannot stop from innovating. It's just that you want, you don't want to pay anymore, and you try to discover things. You try to create the videos, you try to create your own design, your teasers, your outline, your presentations. Just amazing that you somehow you become a graphic designer at the comfort of your home. <laughs> That's correct, and there are free courses online and applications that you can actually use. Yeah. Um, wow. So, so Mark, you're telling us you're telling us that with this opportunities ahead of us, it is what about time to if you really want to have a great job in the coming days, and if you really want to be in in the trend now, you need to acquire all these digital skills that you will be needing. Am I right, so Mark? Um, what, one 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 speci specialization is good. It's, you know, okay. you just kind of look for what makes what works for you. For example, yeah, if you feel good. that yeah. if you feel that you you can do customer uh, you can become a customer service specialist. If that works yeah. for you, that's fine. But what we're saying is that these are the top ten jobs that will very be but you in can demand. Choose from yes the, for you to hold whichever job. In the next, five years. In in the the next, next five, years. five years. Wow, that is too soon without noticing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so right. of course, coupled, coupled with all of these things are mm -hmm. some of the what we can do to prepare ourselves, you not know, to prepare ourselves for this one. So let's take a look at that. Next, please. Yeah, and so we're talking with a lot of digital opportunities, making the most out of it. Yeah, it's really nice to talk about. It's really a great adventure now, and I hope we can still uh, cope up with the coming uh, challenges of these opportunities. Tell us right. more about this, Mark. Yes. In fact, in the Philippines alone, if you're talking to go to the to our Filipino audience, for the past, uh, this was uh, published in July of 2020, um, and it says that the 10 most in-demand jobs in the Philippines is, you've said, I've said it earlier, digital marketing yeah, digital marketer, is number right? one. Number one. Digital marketing is number one. And um, next, take a look. Graphic designer. Graphic designer. Number, number three, user interface designer front-end web developer, tech and customer support jobs, data development and engineer, and of course, supply chain. As I, I wanna talk about supply chain though, because of all of these deliveries and all that, you know, what is going on right now. One of the one of the booming industries or jobs right now is deliveries. Getting all of right. this stuff to your home. And I, I myself have enjoyed that during the pandemic. See, yeah, I, I can, usually there are certain, for example, we talk about food. There's certain food that you can only eat in restaurants, you have yeah. to go out and eat in a, in, a, in a restaurant. But now, at the comfort of your home, just one yeah. click away. It will be delivered. <laughs> see, it, has to like, it has made life a lot easier. Correct. Made life a lot easier. You're correct. And, you know, see, uh, and, and there's, you've seen, there, there's a lot of um, delivery services now, okay, which you can actually choose from. So rates are lowering, are being lowered because there's more competition in that particular line. Unlike in the, in the beginning of the pandemic, there was like only one or two. Right, there was only one or two. Yeah. Now, you've got a lot of apps. You can choose which one is the, is the cheapest for your food delivery. So, wow. well, yeah. What what I was doing then Correct. was you know, I I maximize my buying online. So because of the, the yeah because but of the a huge, little bit expensive, sir Mark. No, but exactly. with, with, it, with this change, a little bit expensive. Right. So the, I maximize my purchase. So if say for example I do my uh, meat meat shopping. Yeah. And um, I just buy, for, if you just buy what, uh, uh, two pieces or two kilos of that, and then the delivery fee is at 200 pesos. So <laughs> I maximize that. I, I, I get 
um, I, I buy for 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 my uh, cousin, uh, for my nephew. So I get about five or ten kilos of uh, different types of meat. So I can maximize the two hundred peso delivery fee. Okay, that's good. Yeah. If you, so it's an advantage you're telling. It's an advantage to buy from one merchant, sir. So you can you can actually save money, no? Sure. But anyway, sure. well, with these jobs in the in the Philippines in the new normal. It's really the jobs that we have to look into, sir. No, so yeah. basically, really a great opportunity say, if you are into it right now and taking advantage of our digital opportunities, sir. Mark, for for the beginners, no, what what are can mm. you what you can share for our beginners for for those who are trying to be because not all are technically savvy, sir. Mark, right? At all yeah. can really do that. So I think there's a good word that I can see there. Train up your digital muscles. What is this all about? <laughs> yes, of course. Now that we already are in the digital world, we have we just have to embrace it, right? Like you were talking about earlier about the boomers getting into yeah. it as well. So whether we like it or not, right? Whether we like it or not, we have to. But the most important thing is take a look at what particular skills, right? You should learn, and depending on the job that you have, you want. Depending on the job that you want, I've seen. We've shown you some of the opportunities that you can do that. So. And then let's say let's go back to basics and say for example you have to learn uh, if you can show me the next slide please right. there one of the one of the things that you need to enhance your your, your digital savvy is right Very because these are, now, uh, these are now the tools the tools that are popular everybody's using them now so yeah. you have to enhance your from your very basic computer knowledge you have to upskill that immediately Right and make right. use of it. Make use of it. Take note. <clears throat> um, I've been looking around. I've been looking around for someone for you know uh, someone to uh, help us out in our learning uh, transformation in the in in, in Philippines. And, Desk. and the, the future of learning is what you call learning in the workflow, where for example, right, you have information, you have content right at the tip of your uh, your fingers so say for example you you right you rens have been assigned to a, a task where you're unfamiliar for example they're asking you to um they're asking to you something that you are unfamiliar with usually what yeah. you do is go to google yeah. Yeah. right you do that right and now, yeah you go to google you try to research <laughs> right so you go to google for example and what happens there is you have a lot of unfiltered content on yep. what exactly you are looking for. For right now, there are certain right. certain um, certain apps now, uh, learning learning sites where you can be. It can you can go go ahead and straight away choose what you need to do. Wow, and it's that's great. Your so, for example, you're struggling with something. You're struggling with an with an idea. Where you're struggling while working on something, and yeah. uh, you don't know how to proceed. Right. So usually at the end of the year, when you have your evaluation, they will propose that, OK, you need to uh, work on improving this particular kind of skill. Now that's got, it's going to be gone because the moment you need it, you can now learn it. You can have like it before, there. Uh, yeah. And like before. Yeah, your correction, Mark, no, the, the, the learning acquisition, the research and uh, the tool for you to be able to accomplish a job. It's not very easy and very comfortable in just one click of your finger. And that's actually helped us a lot, especially me as a trainer, Sir Mark. It really that's helps right. me a lot. This technology really helped me a lot. A long time ago, Sir Mark, if you have no access, if you don't have money, to be honest, if you don't have the resources, you cannot do that. You cannot you cannot submit the output that you want because only if you can really penetrate and really look for the, the resources that they can have. And even even I myself, when I do researching for a certain topic, I need to go to to national bookstore. I cannot buy books a long time ago, but now, Sir Mark, you're right. With this, you're so correct. Just one take of your fingers, then you have all of it. Overload of in, unfiltered information. It's amazing. So that's, so that's the kind of skill. That's the kind of skill that you can all, that you have to develop as well. Being able to zoom in. Right, yep. zoom into the particular. So the word, the, the 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 thing that you need to do there is to use the right keyword. Because when you use the right keyword, you know, yeah. keyword search, you'll be led to the right site. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. For that, for the right That's information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So another thing is also scaling up on 
you're working and collaborating online. Wow, that's uh, that's amazing. How how do you how do you explain it? How can you give us an insight about this? Because you know, working at home, there's still a lot of people looking at. We don't know so much. Sometimes we they are so just hibernated. Some sometimes we cannot feel them. Right? That's true. <laughs> so there is a way to do that, which is what you call your collaboration tools, mm. right? So collaboration tools and. We're actually using some of them already, right? We're using wow. some of them already. For example, we're already using T MS Teams, mm -hmm. right? MS Teams is a collaboration tool that we can already use. We can now uh, fire. It, in other words, let's maximize the the the, uh, the app that we are using. Explore those apps. There's so many ways to connect with people, and you can like MS Teams has evolved already. Like I mentioned, it has yeah. now an MS Learn, right? So that's example of a collaborating and working online, and then. You know, eventually people will be used to seeing each other online, connecting yeah. with each other online, right? Yeah. I want to shoot so, you on that. I want to shoot you on that point, Sir Mark. Uh, how does it feel? How do you? How do you? How do you just again uh, tell us? How is it for you? Are you okay with remote working? Is it? There is a myth that you know a lot of people cannot perform well. But in our situation, are we in the same thought that you know when we when we are working at home, it's actually more productive, Sir Mark? Right? Am I right? True. Because there's well, especially with well, especially with our situation where there's not too much yeah. of destruction because it's just us at home. <laughs> and 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 this is, this is this is actually nothing new to me because in my uh, previous um, employment. Are My previous really? employment, I I was there was a work from home arrangement as well. So, oh, me, that's good. yeah. In fact, my I, first, this experience in the past months was my first remark, and until now, there's still a thing in my mind. If I can still, uh, I'm so productive. Of course, I I'm doing everything. You know, just in, I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it as if I have like a good studio over here. But I want to be honest. I'm not yet into that. Whole thing every day, the whole week, sir, Mark. But yeah. I need to prepare time. myself, right? It, <laughs> it will take time. And one of the things that I do actually is to establish a routine, right? You have to establish a routine. You've got to prepare yourself for work as well. And if you need to dress up to feel that, go yeah. ahead. Because sometimes when you know it changes your it, it changes the, your behavior, it changes the way you look at yourself. Because you are used to be dressed up when you work. So if that works for you, so dress up wow. while even at home, even if there's no one there. Because it it's like what we do. Certain, it's amazing, yeah. I yeah, always do a certain me. feeling. It builds up a certain feeling. And that's 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 one tip that you can actually do. Dress yeah, up for work good. as well. Okay, because it doesn't feel good, it doesn't feel like you're working when you are, you know, you know, in your in your pajamas. Yeah, in your box is short. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're true. So it some, it somehow it's, preps your mind. It somehow preps your mind that okay, um, this is now work time, right? This is now work time. And then be mindful of your time as well. Because you have the members of the family, right? right. So, so you have to take a break and then, you know, explain to them that this is my work schedule so that they don't disturb you and, you know, res respect that particular time that you're supposed to be working. And you're telling us, Mark, uh, we're now really a lot of Filipinos. And I think uh, maybe. 60%, especially those working Filipinos, are now in this collaboration uh, system. Now they, are, they are actually adopted already, and they're trying yeah. to study a lot of these uh, tools that they can use to communicate and to perform their job. Remember, Renz, uh, Renz be even bef uh, before the pandemic, you guys were not very familiar about Zoom on how to yeah. use it. You were yeah. familiar with, with MS Teams. But in my yes. past, like I've said, I mean, in my previous jobs, uh, there was what we call WebEx. From, from yeah, system. Webex. The yeah, webcast so, in the Webex. I love it. Yeah, I know. So I, I, know yeah. I used to use that when I do training, international training, right? Oh. For example, I would uh, train people from from uh, America or from uh, Australia in different time zones. And you've been yeah. doing that already a long time ago. It's actually yeah. existing abroad. Yeah. Yeah. In the so Philippines, say, it's so, I, I so say, famous, no? I was. I was. Uh, what do you call this? I was already. We were. I was already using Webex. Uh, wow. Training even prior to this pandemic. So, but uh, not a lot of people are using WebEx now because of uh, Zoom. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very comfortable and easy to very, use. Yeah, very easy to use. But WebEx but is a lot. But your Mark, you know, I could still remember when I work in Singapore ten years ago. They've been doing this. 
I've seen a lot of schools doing virtually collaborations. You know, even the grades and even the attendance of the students are being done virtually. So yeah. I think uh, it's just that uh, the pandemic has really awakened the Filipinas to go into it. And even the government, I think so, Mark, have That's this right. already realization right. that we need to go along already. We need to go with the trend already. That's nice. Yeah, that's why it okay. wasn't. Oh it, it was. It wasn't something that you know that was strange to me when uh, to start working again uh, in a digital platform because I've already done that in the past. I would have uh, before they the say for example I was working with the BPO uh, space now, and when when before we deploy uh, they bring their people here. You know the the companies in the U.S. before they bring their people here. Uh, I would train them first, number one, on Filipino culture, so that they don't get shocked, right? So, <laughs> yeah. So once we, once we're examining, yeah, we have to orient them, and then the what kind of what expectations do they, do they? What are the work settings in the Philippines and all that? So that it kind of prepares them to come to when they come to the Philippines, they're not shocked. Why are Filipinos like this? Why do they behave like that? So they already have a, a view. Or at least uh, a, a knowledge on how to collaborate with a with a, with a Filipino people. So we talk about the good things and the bad things, things that they should avoid, signs to look out for, things like that. Wow! There, in different time zones. So, so this yeah. is a it's really a uh, a great opportunity really to study you know, one at a time. You no, know, so something like you need to experiment, Sir Mark. One at a time, you do it, then you discover everything which is okay to you which is uh, effective to you, right, Sir Mark? Yeah, you, you just continue, you just look for the, every day you should learn something new. Yeah. Every day you should learn something new. You know, when I have a break from what I'm doing, I scour the net as well for a lot of information on what is new there, so key, keywords, keywords. So that's why I found all of these, this material as well. So I'm sharing it with everyone and it's a backup by data, it is even by Microsoft. Right. All right. So, Sir Mark, hey, before we continue, gonna... let's check. Mm -hmm. Before we continue to take a more, apply more about taking advantage of digital opportunities, especially on your soft skills. Don't go soft on your soft skills, uh, team. We're going to pause for a while because let's try to uh, check this time our our teams. Let's try to check our people who's actually joining us this afternoon. Hope everybody, I think my friends and your friends are joining us this afternoon. Let's try to yeah, check I'm, out I'm if they are here. So I think someone is saying, nice to see you, Mark. It's Hi. Scott. Hi, how are you Hi, there? Scott. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, uh, we have all some friends of mine that go stay home. What is they stay home? Yeah, we're home. <laughs> and I would like to say, Shane Son, thank you for your Ooh, support. Nice <laughs> Thank you for watching. We are really doing great here. Hello from Cebu City. And a few friends also. I would like to say hi to all the vloggers, all the teams. of. Uh, we have this team actually, so Mark. Uh, vloggers are watching you, and I'm just happy to be a part of their teams. And I have this uh, Suave team. We have also YT Clan, something like YouTube Clan, YouTube family. And... Uh, there is something a little more charot plan, charot team. There's a lot of teams actually supporting me. I just want to say thank you for watching right now. And of course, our very dear friends saying hello, Sir Renz and Sir Mark. Carla, uh, hello, Carla there, Marcos, 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 is with us. Thank you for joining. And uh, also, we I would like to say thank you for watching, Arlene. Well, Bellas, you, nice nice you. Nice. Friend. Hi, Arlene. And I'm looking forward to see more of your friends, Sir Mark, in the coming days. Hello, po, Sir Renz. I, the journal. Hi, how are you? Thank you for watching our show right now. All right. So moving on, Sir Mark. Uh, with this, uh, we're talking about the skills right now, right? So sometimes uh, we, we're neglecting some things, our, our role, our skill, our attitude, which is very important because I believe, Sir Mark, technology will never be effective somehow, though it is there, it is there. But still, your character, your preparations, your, your how do you call it, your mindset about it, your skill is still needed to do it because it is technology. And there lies, I think, the difference from each of us. And the one who has the great skill and the great ability to manage it, to manage it rather, has the great advantage. Am I correct, Sir Mark? Totally, totally, and that's that's what we're going to be talking about. In fact, more than ever, more than ever, the shift to the soft skills side 
is now very important in getting a job. Uh, wow. we're, shif we're shifting from the expertise, you know, that person who only knows everything kind of person to someone who knows how to collaborate with other people. The very, uh, there's a very, very big word now. now. If you want to stay, uh, if you want to stay uh, relevant in, in at work at this point in time, the first thing that you need to do is to be able to collaborate. So I've been wow. doing that. You've seen, wow. you've seen that. You've nice seen that word. in practice. Collaboration. I love that word, sir. Always love you've that seen, word. You've seen that. I've been, see, I've been collaborating with everybody else, right? Yeah. I, uh, I work with you guys. I work with the other teams as well. And during this time of the pandemic, there has been more collaboration happening across the group, right? So people you did not, you did not work with before, you start working with them now. So it's just being you know, being open, being open yeah. to that idea yeah. that hey, we need to support each other so that we stay afloat as a company. That is very true. So, you know, so Mark, that's very nice. What have you mentioned is very nice. Then when you believe somebody, you can see now the worth of other people and the, the contribution that these people can give to you and to your team. It's just amazing. Can you expound yeah, that, sir, Mark? Can you I, expound? I, I, oh, I'm a very big believer. I'm a very big believer in collaboration. Ever since I started working, I collaborate with other other departments. Sometimes, not to brag, but sometimes, you know, because yeah. we, we're, we're happy, happy working together. Sometimes when I need people to... Say, for example, we uh, prepare the sales materials and collaterals for a training outside of Metro Manila. So sometimes you, you need people to rush those things. I would borrow staff from accounting, from audit, you know, from even other departments. And they volunteer sometimes. They would say, hey, sir, Mark, do we have, do we have, do we have some work for us? Right? So <laughs> even, even when I was already, uh, you know, I, I was younger, I, already, I was already doing that. So I would collaborate with people from the outside of my department because sometimes you don't have enough human resource to finish the job on time. Right. Wow. But now, that is great. Yeah. But now with, 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 with technology, so say, for example, the events that we put together right after the pandemic, we mm -hmm. launched events in one day preparation. Right. Oh, and it's a question awesome. of, you know, it's a question of who do I talk to? Who do yeah. I get this information from? So that's that's number one. That's uh, that's uh, what do you call this. That's collaboration. Knowing who to, who to connect with, number one. So I connect with someone. I say, hey, I need I need help. Mm -hmm. um, would you know who, who, who can help us out? And then they say, oh, yeah, contact this person. Then I ask again. I mean, if I need some information again, I ask another person who I believe this person has that information, and then that would be led to that information. And that, that, work, that working together, coming from different, different people, some of the people I even connect, contacted during that time, I, they're not even friends on Facebook, but I had to stalk them on Facebook because there's no way to connect with them. I don't have the numbers, and I'm sure they're on Facebook. That's your digital identity that I was talking about earlier. So I would say, hey. Wow. Um, I would say, hi. Hey, say for example, you know, uh, Rens, I need information. It's amazing, Sir Mark. Hey, it's amazing. But I believe, Sir Mark, this is also what we call a term that I believe. Because if not because of this uh, attitude, I think uh, good traits of the people that you're talking to. So there's a thing that we call a responsiveness and readiness, responsiveness, and visibility, right? Correct. I think everybody, the one, each department as well, is preparing also as well. That they also have the mindset that one of time, because we're now remote, uh, we need to be prepared because some might, someone might just be calling us or just be needing to. And all the thing that we have to do is to be responsive to them and to be to submit to them to produce. And you can only do that if you have the technology, Sir Mark, right? That's right. And that's actually skill that you have with your character. Okay. Right. Talking it's to that. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, there you go. With us, yeah. some skill that you mentioned a while ago. Tell us more about this one. Yeah, all right. This, like I mentioned in the beginning, uh, uh, in the, uh, earlier, uh, one of the most important things to develop now, in fact, people are, when, when they hire people, now they're, the first thing that they take a look at is the emotional intelligence of that person, mm -hmm. right? More than anything else, emotional intelligence is, plays a very vital role in your success in whatever field, right? In whatever field that you have. So, so we have shifted from the intellectual, in the, uh, the intellectual, uh, capacity or capability of the person, but we are now oh, looking at uh, the emotional resilience, that. yeah, the emotional intelligence and resilience of a Ooh. person you hire, because we've seen that yeah. the, the intelligent people are the toxic people. 
And <laughs> once in my life, friends, I was that. I was toxic to 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 the people around me. So I end up I end up doing things by myself. Right? Yeah. Most of yeah, the time so, we do that. Yeah. So, <laughs> we don't want to delay the, the the output. We don't want you know we don't want to make these things done delayed. That's correct. So when I found out that we need you need to um, develop certain skills within you to be able to work with people, right? Work smoothly with people. So all of these things now are the very very critical skills, critical soft skills that we need to develop as well. And worry not because there's so many content again in the internet. Simply type in emotional intelligence and you can learn yeah. what that is all about. Yeah. Uh, another thing, I would like to uh, point that. See, before we were just talking about embracing change. Yeah. And now, that's right. <laughs> and now we're talking about embracing unexpected, unexpected change, change. Because that's exactly what happened to us in the pandemic. Yeah. It's a book of words, so big answer, Mark. Yeah. It's a book of world, volatile, uncertain, complex, and uh, ambiguous. <laughs> yes. So people wow. with, with, with high emotional intelligence and people with a high, uh, what do you call this, um, flexible mindsets were able mm -hmm. to immediately embrace it. So there was some bit of a disturbance, affect, affects you a little bit. But if you are that kind of a person that has good resilience, right, and you know that this yeah. change is going to is is going to end at a certain point because it's it's not the the situation not change but the way we cope with the situation is what matters so for example uh, let, let me let me explain something in in the terms of uh, of unexpected change say how do you, how would you feel before the pandemic everybody mm -hmm. everybody would uh, you know when, when, uh, okay. like even the CBN, for example or even the, mm -hmm. before that when you lose a job that is an unexpected change. But you'd ask yourself, um, is it, did you cause the change or outside forces caused the change, which is like the pandemic right now. So yeah. in, that, in, that, in that sense, I said, I told myself, okay, this is affecting me only because of the fact that I allow it to affect me. This is an outside stimulus, but how to cope with it is with me. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's I a different would, thing I, to cope, yeah. Right, so when, when you start looking at you, because I'm sure a lot of people felt guilt that they probably thought of themselves as causing the pan this pandemic. No, no, please don't think that. You know, you did not cause that at all, right? It's something <laughs> that just happens, okay? It happens Unexpected. Before. It hasn't been before. It's nothing new. Yeah. But the way to, to go about this situation is actually to manage yourself, right? Manage your emotions. Manage the way you think, right? Manage the way you think. Right, so that's how to cope with unexpected change. Very, very nice. Very nice. Okay, let's say for example, uh, another thing that you need to work on is critical thinking for better judgment. Better because judgment. what? Yeah, it has to be crit not just critical thinking, but for better judgment and decision making. Mm -hmm. Because the pandemic also showed us showed us that you have to make a decision now. You can no longer yeah. delay decisions. Right, if you need you need to get things done, and to second guess yourself. No, 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 no. It's, you know, you just have to take that risk. And when you take that, you know, you, ha you have good critical thinking, right, skills, you will be able to take calculated risks, right? So risks that you can, you can manage, you know it's going to happen. When we say calculated risk, what do you mean yeah. by that, Samar? Calculated risk. What do you mean well, by that? You, you, you've done a lot of, uh, you've done a lot of uh, judgment, you've done a lot of um, analysis on what's going to happen. So if you take this road, okay, we're, we're good. That's a calculated risk. We know it will happen, and then we'll be ready to take it on. Unlike, yeah. unlike okay. a risk that's not calculated, right? Something that you know, um, you did not think about, they did not prepare yeah. for. So right? win or lose, whatever, whatever happens, something like that. Yeah. Get yeah, something like that. Okay, there. Look at that next one, Renz. Learning to trust. I love it. Wow. You know why? You just have yeah. to trust. You just have to trust people now. You don't see them. You work with them. You collaborate yeah. with them. There's no more room for doubting these people, right? So yes. One of the one of the things, one of the old habits that I also had was very being skeptical of people. In the past, sometimes you feel that way, right, sir? That sometimes, yeah. Yeah, but when I like, I'm, you know, I've always shared with you. You deal with what you have. Correct. You deal with what you have. So, say for example. 
uh, in my team, for example, I have very, very junior staff, but we get things done because I trust their, their skills. I trust them to, do, to be able to do it. Right. So that's the way if, if, if you look at them and say you're not prepared for this, they will think they will think they will not be able to accomplish the task. But when you trust them with a task and then you tell them I'm here, you know, I'm here if you have any questions, they become more confident as well in doing the, the job. Right, in doing the job. So a very it, it's a it's a, it's a very nice uh, actually a very nice skill to develop, you know, learning to trust other people. When I started doing that, my life became easier. Life became easier. Um, Correct. You know, I, 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 I became more confident. I talked to anyone. I see. I smile at everybody else. You know, you, you know me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I think so that's true. Trust is, is something that, to, that will make you really free, right? There's no more doubting your mind, and you can just actualize and be productive every day and just talk who you, you are. Just, you know. Having this kind of skill is really a uh, aptitude or skill or trait is really very important now, yeah, especially that we're yeah. very far from each other, right? Yeah, because if there's a lack of trust within working a working team, there is no will, engagement, you know, sir Mark. At yeah. the same time, there's no engagement. It will it will slow down the job, yeah. right? It will slow down the job, and then at the end, you all lose. Correct. But when you when you trust each other, you learn that you know you, this this person has the right skills for the for the job. And if you see that they need help, simply trust them that they will deliver. It's just and the same with saying, Sir Mark, that when we believe in each other, there is a trust and there will be a teamwork to happen, right? It just happens. So, teamwork is just a teamwork is just a uh, byproduct of trust. Yeah, it's amazing. Wow, communication skills more than <laughs> ever. Okay, when you talk <laughs> about to develop, it's a continuous learning process. <laughs> right, communication skills. Is a very a very very important skill right now because okay. Let me ask you first before you continue, some Mark. How did you develop your communication skill? You're good to it. I'm not so good to it. I'm not so good. But how do you do that? <laughs> well, I believe in. I believe. Well, young uh, uh, as a young person, you no, know, I grew up uh, with a family of of teachers, oh. and um, I I was already a uh, wide reader. Right, I was really a wide reader. I was always I interested. Help, I think, yeah. yeah. Mm. And then, um, if 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 I say, you know, I sp I spent most of my high school in the library. Ooh. So. So you always spend of the very strict and the killer librarian. <laughs> actually, I I was the librarian. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I volunteered to become a librarian because oh. you know I want to you know make use of most of my time. So. I That's would make why. sure at a certain point in my life, at a certain point in my life, you know, I would sleep, I would be uh, in high school, before I go to sleep, I make sure to at least know new uh, 10 new words from the dictionary. Ooh. So yes, yes, I've read the entire your dictionary. Your book is your world. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, even up until I was working, uh, I would still go to book sale, you know, you know that, that, that uh, book quarter. Uh, and every week I would buy five. So every weekend i would go browse the 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 library the the, the, the books there and wow. i you know and and i i actually also tried to challenge my mind so i would read three books at the same time so i would read one chapter Ooh. here one chapter here and one chapter here and then that's amazing try not to mix up try not to mix up the characters yeah you know, try not to mix up the characters in the storyline so you can try to kind of compartmentalize you try to compartmentalize your you know your thinking, right? Back to That's your question. Okay. Back to your question on communication skills. I uh, I'm already a fan of really you know being on stage. Even at yeah. the early age, I was already hosting. Um, I would host um, school school parties. I would host school events. And you sing as well. You're a good singer as well. Thank you. Yes, I actually competed when I was in I in in grade school. I competed in the. Um, uh, if I'm not if you're not familiar, I could reveal my age really from with Namsia. <laughs> Right, so wow. uh, there, I, I also wow. did that, and I was yes, I was a soloist in church. <laughs> so that really helps, no, Sir Mark. I think the exposure, the experience, the opportunity given to you to do this job. So at the same time, you're honing yourself also by reading. Really helps you to improve and be good at the communication skill, right? Right, and one of the things that I've also developed over the years when I was exposed to um, 
exposed to the different types of languages or different types of accents, and I'm trying to use one now. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. <laughs> what, what, what we actually do, what we actually do is we play the the language in the background, mm -hmm. and particularly, particularly, I was uh, listening to uh, Anderson Cooper. If you're familiar with Anderson Cooper. So yeah. one of the things, you know, um, you, you, you are, our American uh, American president in my past job uh, would be surprised because every time he would be around, we automatically switch to the accent, to his accent. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that, happened ourselves. To me. Yeah. that happened to well, me, Sir Mark, when I work in Singapore. My my boss, former boss, is an Italian guy. So every time that he's there, we need to say, Rrr. say Rena, <laughs> how are you? Is that what yeah. you're talking about? <laughs> And of course, the other the other fact that that I actually did uh, com skills, accent neutralizations courses, uh, um, British and, and Australian, because we we need to train the Filipinos how to hear properly. Because sometimes you don't really understand it because uh, because of the way they pronounce those things. But when you get to be very used to the way they speak, eventually you just understand it. Mid sentence, for example, you already understand the message. So that plays a very important part of, of communications. So when we communicate with our clients, you you if they hear you the same way, the faster they'll be able to transact with each other. But if they right. hear you differently, so those filters are gone. You know what I'm saying? Right. The filters are gone. You use the proper words. You use the right word to communicate what the message. But if you have a lack of 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 uh, of, of uh, words, you will be you know we'll, there's a lot of break in that communication. And sometimes it could be even misconstrued because you're using the you're using the wrong word, right? So there, I it's technically I listen to CNN, Fox News, and then in my mind, you know, I I as I hear it, as I hear it, I no, I repeat. Okay. As I hear it, I repeat. Nice. And then so the, so that your your ears get used mm -hmm. to that sound and your yeah. tongue and your voice and the way you you say it also becomes accustomed to it. Prior to so you're telling us, Sir Mark, there's really, there's really an effort, no, for you to improve the communication. You need to try, oh, you yeah. need to practice, you need to drill, and you need yeah. to do the effort. Really, is understanding it. It's, yeah. it's something that can be learned. Am I right, Sir Mark? You can learn about it. Yeah, it can be done. Uh, with my when I've experienced in the call centers, there are people who are coming from, and I'm trying to use a different accent now. Yeah. But we're coming from the province with a very, very thick accent, but constant, constant practice, constant communication, constant, constant, constant conversations. In six months' time, your accent is like, changing yeah. now, Sir Mark. Your accent is changing now. Are you, are you being, uh, <laughs> what's <laughs> happening to you? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> because you're talking about communication skills, and thank you for that. Okay. On top of that, on top of that wrench, no, on top of that is also your ability to effectively listen. Yeah. Listening yeah. is very important. I think to be a good communicator, you must have the skill of this listening very well. But talking about communication skills, before we go to effective listening, is it this this is true, right? I think you're gonna believe me that the better the communication, the better the intervention in the technology. Am I right? Perfect. So you still That's right. Need to communicate That's true. That's true. using technology, but you know, you need to communicate and your mind yeah. is working your hands for you to do that. Um, let, me, let me go. Let's let's go back more basic. Let's go back more basic. People who have low communication skills did not do well in math. Correct. Because mathematics is English. Yeah. So if you don't understand, <laughs> if you don't understand the words, like, how will you how will words. you become good in math? Yeah. Because math is it's all it's all words. Right. Similarly, yeah. similarly, if you're your uh, verbal acuity, as would, I would say, is um, high, you would be able to get exactly what you need from the internet. That's how you can now filter the sites that you visit using the right yeah. words, right? So if you don't yeah. have that, you'll have a big time, you know, scouring to a lot of content and, you know, I'm sure you have experienced this. So what am I going yeah. to, where am I going to start? <laughs> There's so much here. <laughs> Correct. And there's so much pressure now to, you know, filter out those information and put them all together into one content, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's the basic uh, content of that, understanding the communication skill. Okay. Uh, 
effective listening is uh, very important as well, so Mark. And because yes, it's part of uh, it's actually part of part all of these things. No? Yeah, it's part of all of these things. And effective listening also connects with persuading others because if you don't know how to listen, you will not be yeah. able to, to. They won't listen to you as well. Correct. Right. They won't listen to your points of view because you're not also listening. So there's a breakdown in communication. So it's important that to know when to stop talking and process the information coming in. And then you can communicate effectively if you listen properly. So Mark, the last one is all about writing in plain language creativity. This is important as well because you'll be communicating through emails, to your to your GCs, to your different platforms. You still need to write. And you yeah. know, this thing is skill is I think significant as well. Can this yeah. be learned? When I, be yes, it can be it can be learned. And and, and it's, it's it's important really because of the digital platforms that we'll be communicating in. So if you like, for example, flowery words, nothing gets straight to you know, get nothing get not not getting straight to what you want. I know, you know, I'm, 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 me myself, sometimes I go to this long paragraph, even in fact I can just say it in three words. <laughs> exactly my point. And press it because you cannot write it. Right. So the trend now, the trend really now in communication, the simpler the better. Right? Wow. The simpler the better. And if may I, may I add Sir Mark, there is our what we call millennial slangs. Are, do you think it is important as well? Well, in if it's, you know, these, expressions, these expressions are only applicable depending on who you're communicating with, right? So, uh, Correct. but that's the, that's the reason why he, he, the, 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 the thing that the key word here is plain language, where anyone, language. yeah, where anyone who has an understanding of English, of the English language, can, know, can, can understand what you're trying to say, right? Correct. Can understand what you're trying to say. Gone are the days when you use uh, highfalutin words and you become, you know, people think that you're the most intelligent you're the person best. in the room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're the best in town if you right. if they hear it from you. Wow, he's right. amazing. Even though there's a problem, with it, as long as you pronounce it and deliver it with confidence, then you're the one. <laughs> right, but that's not the case anymore because most of the time you'll be sending out messages, you know, yeah. push right. messages to everyone else using all this gadget. So the faster you can compose, the simpler you can compose then the faster the, the, the work gets done. Amazing, correct. Yes. And most importantly, you've got to unleash your creativity. You've got to be more creative this time. There's so much things that, that are happening uh, simultaneously, so many developments here and there, uh, information, uh, changings and everything else. You've got to be able to come up with something new as well. Because the old way of doing things doesn't work anymore. Doesn't work correct. anymore. In fact. In fact, you know, um, I've introduced the Viber community. A lot of people, uh, when when I when I was given an assignment with uh, the helping out the TOH, you know, in uh, in the early days of the pandemic, um, we need to con get a contact. We need to contact everyone we trained immediately after the training, so then they can get their usernames and password credentials and all that. So what I did was I created the Viber community, which is now at four thousand, five thousand users. Okay. Whoa. Uh, there were a lot of pessimistic people, the boomers, right? Because they see all this information yeah, yeah, not being viral, right? They say, oh my God, this is a uh, data privacy uh, <laughs> uh, et cetera, problem, yeah. right? So I said, <laughs> well, well, you know what? There is a pandemic at this point in time. Is data privacy more important than life? That's my yeah. argument. They say, well, they shut up. Yes. Right? That's who, true. Who, I mean, who? what is more, what, what is more critical at this point? So say, for example, we train you, we go the, the usual route. Okay, please send us your email address and we'll, we'll, send, you the, we'll send you back the information. And all of this. How long will that take? How long will that take before this person even gets that email? Yeah. And by, by, by that time, see, the, 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 the virus would have spread already. Correct. By the time you get your contact, your, 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 your uh, user name and address, that would be like, what, 10 days, 7 days average? They're dead. How many people have already been infected? So it doesn't yeah. make sense, right? So yeah. I said, you sense. just have to trust the tool. You just have to use the tool. And there. Amazing. Yeah. It's great. And, then, it's... And, 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 and you can actually, but you can also use Viber. You can pin messages. You can pin yeah. messages for everyone. Right? So if you need, yeah. yeah. If you have one, let's say you're very important. Uh, say, for example, there's a change in policy. Instead of emailing everybody else, right? Like, you know, that's 5,000 people. No? Yeah. Crafting an email. Getting all of those names, okay. And by the way, because of that, I found out that when you use Gmail, you can max. You are actually maxed out at five thousand. 
Really? Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So when you, you use email, Gmail. Yeah, Gmail. Your 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 Gmail. Because of that, I found that out. No. So what happened there was uh, we were sending out the, uh, uh, which is why I discovered the pin uh, feature of Viber, because mm. RJ, <clears throat> the, the one who was working with email. Me, are, you, are you are you saying it's a a blast email? Yes. Blast no, communication. No, that's it's not a blast communication. So for example, I send you your certificate, right? So I send yeah. it out to you. So there's five thousand people in a day. And imagine a lot of work has to be put there and time. Yeah. And so, correct. So RJ was That's like, amazing. so I said, hey, have you have you sent the send the certificates? And he goes, sir, I'm still half. Because uh, and then as he was doing it, he was doing it using an, an account. By the time he reaches <laughs> five thousand <laughs> emails, or emailed five thousand people, the access was blocked. Yeah. And so I said, okay, we need to find a way to get this to the people. Oh. Okay. And then we found the pin fit feature of Viber. So what we do there Ooh. is we all. We pin their we pin their certificates, and then they just access it after the training. It's amazing. That's yeah. cool. Instead of wow, well, you can tell you can share that to me because we kept sending certificates one by one in their emails. <laughs> That's right. That's so a we, great we, tip. Yeah. So uh, now real time wow. answer. The, the community has become a help desk as well. If there are questions uh, for those who people who uh, learn about the 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 thing can now answer themselves so it it's, so it eased up the work of the actual help desk person wow. so if there's a question like for example you post that question it was answered and you see that question popping up in the community that anyone else who have experienced that will answer so that the help desk oh, doesn't have to answer anymore because some people have experienced it they now share the experience and this is how you go about and it and everybody that will was, learn that wow very, that's amazing that's Mark. Very it's really amazing very powerful, very powerful. So Mark, I, I'm happy when you share these things. Is that you, we're just uh, we're just uh, a living testimony that when we discover, when we explore things in that technology, it will make our lives easier somehow, right? So Mark, it will really make the work easier. Wow, and that just have to share it to other people for them to learn as well and discover it. Yeah, you just need to find ways, and they were like amazed. In fact, there was this other, uh, there was this group of. Uh, doctors from a certain area here in metro manila did not want to use zoom because they were afraid of zoom because of what yeah. you know the, the issue. yeah so i told mm -hmm. them so they, that's, that's why i had to use webex for them but then i told them at the end i said you know what this is a paid account what you saw on tv on news like with uh vico for example that was not a paid account so the security features is not the same as a paid account correct right? So no one can just march in, just like what happened in the in the conference, you know, that press conference of Vico, because the reporter was using a, uh, a, a, a you know, oh, free account. Really? Oh my God! Yeah. So that's what happened there. But if so you also, web was invaded, no, it, it might be in danger. And also, and also, I actually had the, I had uh, the, the Viber features uh, vetted out by our uh, IT team. So that's nice. Yeah, so I, I had to ask them, okay, I need to use this. So which is why I also created our Viber community in in the uh, in Philindes, and that's how we communicated with each other, right? In the pandemic, right. announced it became a it became a bulletin 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 for everybody else. Uh, we post um, presidential announcements, changes in this, new new things and that, new information of the COVID nineteen, new information of the bacteria. We uh, we shared videos. So so sabi nila sir Mark, ikaw na nga, ikaw na nga Mark Barikawa. So that's Mark Barikawa. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, if we can move on. Talking about, the... yeah, sorry, talking sorry. about, go ahead sir Mark. Yeah, 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 go ahead, sorry. Talking about all of this, you know, this uh, skills, this uh, traits, this attitudes, it's just something like about your cognitive and affective side of it and learning just all of this, integrating all of these things, sub skills in your daily activities will really make you very productive sir mark yeah is it true yeah. actually and i think coping up will be easy and one day you can you can be proud that during this time uh you have come up with this develop this within you that you can say you're prepared in the coming no, it's days everything. It's everything it's day. we go back to that thing we're, we're now more connected more than ever right yeah we are dealing with people right we talk to people 
who we don't even know. We don't, they don't have identity. In my previous Correct. job, like I was telling you, I would collaborate with people from India only via email. We only know each other via email. And there's something, there's one thing that's really funny that happened in my life. No? Um, there was this girl, lady of HR, which I used to work with on a project, but we never really met. It's totally email, simply, simply email uh, work. So I set up the reports, we produce the, uh, we do the training and all that stuff. You know what, when, when I moved to another company, she actually joined us and then her name sounded familiar. And I say, you are the, that person, right? And he goes, yeah, you are the person, right? So for the first time, we've been working like um, two years, I think, we've worked for two years. We never saw each other. And that was not, there was not even a pandemic then. Wow. Yeah, my clients in India, my clients in, our clients in, in India, there was, there was never a face. There was never a face. So it's all just <laughs> playing, getting projects done. Wow. Yeah, getting projects done via email. So that's how important communication skills is. Yeah. The simpler, the better. The faster, the uh, you know, the the you know, the faster you can actually deliver what you uh, what you can. All right. Wow, that was very impressive. And I think uh, you have shared a lot of things this afternoon. Let's move on on these other things that we need to not to forget yes, because it's very, 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 very important very, issues, uh, Sir Mark. Tell us more very, about very, this one. This is a very, very important thing to develop mm -hmm. as well. And we're starting, it's called allyship and inclusive conversations. In your term, allyship, it's a friendship, allies. it's a collaboration yeah. of friends, being, allies. Being, being friends, yeah, being allies. Yeah. Being friends. And inclusive conversations, because now more than ever, we now communicate cross-culturally. Mm -hmm. We now work cross-culturally. Like because a long time ago, we have this inbred, culture inbreeding, something like, the culture is just in the one, they don't want other people to experience it. They just want to share all of this in their community and the country. Now we are on the other side of the reverse of that. Is that so, Sir Mark? Yeah. Barriers, you know, the cultural barriers have been shutting down. They're, yeah. they're, they're gone now. Like, yeah. like I mentioned, you know, I, I work with people, Australians. I work with uh, Americans. I work with Brits. I work with the Indians. I work Ooh. with the Filipinos. In, in, in a team, for example, there will be uh, people from all over, the, all over the world. And that you've got to be able to, at first, you know, it was fearful in my end, you know, because I've been used to talking to just uh, Filipinos, right? So I would somehow know culturally how to communicate with them. But it was, uh, it was, uh, it was very different when I started working with Americans, right? Mm -hmm. and, and of course, you still have, you still have that... Uh, uh, confidence level that you might be you know that they, they're more intelligent because they sound more american than i am yeah. so I started, I started, like, you know I, I had to hone that skill experience I, that yeah. yeah i've got to sound like them and then they would ask me most of the time <laughs> most of the time people would ask me where which part of the state are you from I said, yeah i've never been to the states right i've never <laughs> been to the states so when i hear that kind of comment i know that i'm already communicating at their level and which made That's me become good. more confident mm -hmm. for myself Right, more confident in myself. Then sometimes they would say, "You sound more American than I am." <laughs> <laughs> you are. So, yeah. So, uh, do, you, do you have that kind of situation, Sir Mark? That when you're in there, when you're at the zone, everything just come into flow. That is what you're trying to tell us, right? Yeah. If you if you really master that kind of skill, when yeah. everybody's just around you, these are all people around the world. We just feel like you belong and you're one of them, and that is what we call your Flowing within the song. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then let's talk about this very important uh, concept of the unconscious bias, right? So it's very, unconscious very unconscious bias. What do you mean by yeah. this, Mark? Well, you have, have you haven't encountered this? Um, not necessarily. Maybe just uh, with the biases. You, said yeah. you don't, you don't, you don't mind. You don't notice it. You don't. So is that something like that? Uh, hold your horses. Let me pull up something so that you can. You can uh... Okay. All right. All right. You're still watching the Mind Gears live here in YouTube channel, and this is Renz. With me is Mr. Mark Barikawa, having yeah, an insight okay. about the future of work. <laughs> right. So there are actually different types of unconscious biases because based on the 
initial beliefs that you have, for example, uh, what you say, for example, the unconscious bias on, and I would like to use that as an, as, as an example, the unconscious bias of people or specifically Filipinos in terms of money. Money, okay. Yeah, money, right? You are not actually aware that of your, your of that driving mentality behind, you know, the, about, about money, right? Uh, speaking of, I'm going to talk about, um, I have another uh, uh, event coming up. It's called uh, Legacy. What is your legacy? So in that talk, I talk about people's mindsets over money, for example, right? We all want to have money, Tama. We all want to have yes. money. Yeah. But so deep inside, it has been totally embedded by our belief system as we grew up that there is something wrong with money. <laughs> really? <laughs> true or not? Very, very true. Very, very yes, true. Correct. Right? So every time you think of money, you associate it to evil because growing up, that was what is being told you. Yeah, that is the, the myths about it. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes they said that money is not, not the most important thing in this world. <laughs> exactly. And when you have that kind of mindset, you will never mm. attract it. You will never have it because you actually hate it. Because it, deep at the back of your mind, right? The back of your mind, boom, it's, it, it's wrong. It's evil. Yeah. It's negative. But if you become aware that it's not, okay, okay, then you start learning how to make it. And you attract right. it, right? And you attract yeah. it. Right. Okay? So that's that's the um, that's that's uh that's that's just what I want to uh, uh, what do you call this? There are other type other things as well. For example, um, because of the your experience in life, for example, your unconscious bias is about, or say for example about love, right? Just just because of your own personal experience about it, <laughs> you try to influence everybody else now that love or for example, yes. you, you know, you get my point. <laughs> Um, yeah, I example, get it now. I get it now. <laughs> for example, just because you got hurt, that love hurts. Loving is not important to you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like and that. you don't want to that's love true. anymore. You that don't is, want other true. people to be happy anymore. Yes, it becomes your bias. bias. <laughs> yeah, it becomes your bias now. And it's amazing. Yeah, you're not aware of it. So you've got to be aware because even the, the reason I'm saying that is whatever is embedded, for example, you know how we uh, we as a Filipino people are proud of our race. We think we're yeah. more, you know, we are better than the other races. So it, it's innate in us. Uh, uh, our racism is very innate in us. You see, we look down at Chinese people when they're in the Philippines, but who are the Chinese? They're the most, they're, ri they're richer than us. Yes. We look down at, you know, we look down at the Indians, right? The culture, without knowing it, is looking down at a typical, a typical uh, personality, and they don't like you, and they don't like you for that. And you don't, sure. you're not aware why you're even believing that, right? People who has this unconscious bias that when you, for example, you look a certain way, you are being described a certain way, and that's who you are already, right? These things you have to be aware of. So, say for example, you're dealing with, uh, for example, there's an unconscious bias against black people. When we see a black person, you know, we see a someone, you know, we see there's a there's a typical there's a typical vi visual that you have in your mind. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, it's still happening, sir. Mark, still happening right now. That's my point. So I used to be like that until I recognized my biases, right? Until I recognized my biases. For example, about um, my knowledge, you know, uh, growing up, my knowledge of the Indians is that they're Mumbai. That's it. Period. But when I started working with them, that started working with them, uh, you realize that the skin color, wherever you're coming from, doesn't matter. At right. the end of the day, you are a team working together. And for see, if you still have that bias of uh, trying to understand where they're coming from and all of that, you know, just be straightforward and just work with them. It it works, right? It works. That's true. That's true. Which actually, I already talked about everything, start, starting with the unconscious bias. You've got your diversity and inclusion and belongingness, for example. So my mindset there is, uh, I am part of this team, right? So I make sure I include everyone in the team. I'm not sure if you practice this in your in your team. No? Every every yeah. communication, every communication, every project I'm involved in, 
my team is always copied in. So they know exactly what's going on, what projects I'm working on. So they also know if just for FYI purposes, so I would, you know, they would know when I need them. I said, hey, have you been reading this and that? Okay, so I need your help on this one. So that when the time when that time comes that I need them to support me and assist me in a particular part right. of that project, they don't, they're not like, you know, they 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 already know right from the start Correct. what's going on. They're so involved. They're, they're involved. They're, they're involved on FYI until I get them to be involved. That's amazing. So yeah. learning and awareness about the job could really help them to support you. Yes, and it also makes them feel good because they feel that they're part of project. Of the of team. Project. Correct. Yeah, correct. Right. So and then, of course, uh, one of the most difficult things is actually communicating about sensitive issues. Is yeah. You know, yeah, sensitive issues like, for example, you see an attitude problem from a teammate. Yeah, that's you true. Would go around it, or of course, we and it's still happening right now, especially yeah. during this. It's so hard to you know to process or, and to check this kind of situations or mark no. Or you go, and you go around, attitude you go around using the way how Filipinos would go about that. They yeah. talk to someone else about the issue, and the last person who will know about the issue is the person who has an issue. <laughs> Before, before, even before the person even knows about the issue, everybody already knows about it. Knows. Uh, <laughs> You're the last the one, the last one to know about it. <laughs> as an issue, but it's That's nicer work that with all this kind of uh, what you're showing us. I think it's very important though to thrive across differences because everybody's part of the team. Especially, uh, you know, when you communicate to other people, there's a lot of strategies to learn, to cope up, to to adjust, to deliver. In fact, I think it is thriving. In fact, in fact, no, it's not. It's not really that. It, it's uh, the pandemic has shown that. The pandemic has shown that. No? Even mm -hmm. in um, in in the different uh, companies, uh, mm -hmm. collaboration and inclusiveness is already happening because of this. Yeah. Like what we did, for example, what we did with Infill Invest. No, what we did in Phil Invest when the pandemic happened, we started sharing services, meaning uh, uh, you know, making people help and support other functions. Moving people into other functions because there are more, like for example, my team, all of my team now uh, is part of work from home validations. Mm. So technically, yeah. I'm just the one doing this now because that's because that is a more important. It's it has it has uh, practical implications, right? That job has practical implications and it impacts people. Right. So I this good strategy, sir, Mark. No, maximizing yeah. also this the talents of these people. Talent, right, maximizing of talent. So, uh, but you, you just have to share resources. Not just you, not just you know, not just uh, tools and everything, but human resources and volunteer. Yeah. And when you have mastered all of these ones on the screen right now, wow, oh, correct, you know, yeah, you know, you you are able to um, thrive across differences. People will always be different. You know, I used yeah. to have that issue as well. Like you're different, I'm different. We will never agree. But I changed my mind. <laughs> I changed my mindset. I changed my mindset. There will always yeah. be a role. There will always yeah. be a role. There will always be a point where we will yeah. agree. So I choose that rather than rather than uh, amplifying the difference. Correct. Right? And you always tell me it, there is a process for that. There is a process. But I start one of the things as well that you know that uh, you need also to, to to develop is stop stereotyping people. Correct. Right. Stop Correct. stereotyping people. Okay. Yep. The what I advocate, for example, is I did not hire this person because of his beliefs. I hired this person because of his ability and capability and his skill. His skill. So, right. so whatever the, the cultural background is, whatever the belief system of this person is, right? I did not hire that person because of that. I hired this person because of that. That is amazing. Skills. That is yeah. very true. That is very true. You're an HR expert, Mr. Mark Barikawa. Yeah. You're an HR you expert. Look at that way, Renz. You look at it that way, you don't see. You don't see the you don't see people as as as, as who they are uh, but physically who they are physically but what they can do right they're capable of capable correct. With. correct what are they what they are capable of and that's basically just what this is all that this is all about so regardless of whether you are you know coming from a different background yeah. you are coming from a different orientation if you want to really thrive at work You've got to embrace everybody else. Besides, Correct. you have no choice. Until you hire, you, you are the hiring person. Oh. Until you are the hiring person, you have a choice to who to hire. But you are just also being hired. You know what I'm saying? Correct. So yeah, people, that is 
yeah, you didn't have a choice to work with these people. But it's, it, there is that choice to actually work with them well. And I think, Sir Mark, it's better also to always give this uh, mindset that we can still develop this person out of something. And if you right. think they're not productive in this job, that's you mentioned a while ago, that we can just, you know, align, realign them, reconstructuring them, re-engineering this type of people. Because, yes, you're telling us you hire these people because they are capable and that they have the skill and the, uh, the, the, the capability to do it. So I think uh, in this time, that is very important. To give very, other very chance. More than ever. If you want to survive yeah. in the digital world, you've got to be able to just simply embrace people you work with. No questions. That's, like, that's for, example, in my case, no, for my example, in my case, no. Mm -hmm. If you notice, my email does not have any title at the at the bottom. It's simply just Mark Barikawa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because since you're you're trying to, what is no, that? Because it it changes the way people see me if they see your title at the at the at, you know in the bottom. Correct. Your yeah, designation you know, something has to say about you. <laughs> even before, even before they communicate with me already, there is that already preconcept that that. that oh, I love that. I love that. Humility. That is humility, sir, Mark. I think uh, not all can do that. You know, that, that unconscious bias. You see, that is unconscious oh, bias. Some, some, people, some people have a lot of these reactions. You know, when I first joined, actually, when I first I love joined, that. I love that. The first joint fit in this, honey. You remember, honey would introduce me around as, oh, by yeah. the way, this is FDC, and then it changes. I see their face. How people, how people will talk to you, will deal with you, or they yeah. want to be friends with you or not? They become somehow. There is now <laughs> that. There's a difference in the way they will now communicate with me because of a yeah. title, because that of a title. True. I believe but in when, you. When you do, when you do not use that title, they become comfortable. Just yes, you're correct. Their ideas, because yeah. they know that they're just you're talking to a person as a person, not the position. You know, sometimes when you when you recognize the position, you're not actually talking to that person. Correct, and yeah, sometimes it works. That is very true. Sometimes when I had an email, I try to check first who are those people in the loop with that email, and when I saw there is something like ABP's executives <laughs> hire, you need to be very careful. <laughs> exactly, you think your confidence level goes down. Just, yeah. by, just by a position title. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a good tip. That was a good uh, humility sharing. Yeah. See, it, And not all can do that, Sir Mark. Not all can do that. Because some people, because, most, well, depending on where, 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 what your belief system is, you're in the Philippines, yeah. so positions and titles are very, very important. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, when I joined the BPO space, there was a breakdown of titles. Everybody just calls everybody else. Uh, you buy your Yeah, by name. Yeah, so, correct. First name. Even, even say, for example, even in, it was a very flat organization. So um, managers and uh, there's no special seat for a manager. There's no special seat for a vice president. In fact, the pre the president's office is a shared office because he's not there always. And if even if it's there, and I booked it for a meeting with a client, you know, he politely just looks for a workstation where he can work. And that's what I learned. That's what I learned from the, my my experience from the BPO. I've never experienced my president offering me to make coffee. Ooh. Because my station was just right by the coffee station. It was just right by my back. <laughs> and then when the president would make, yeah, when, when he would make coffee, they'd say, hey, Mark, what are you doing? Yes. And then say, um, would you like to take your coffee? And I said, oh. <laughs> and then when I, when I realized that these people, these titles are, you know, this, they're there. I mean, they're, the positions are there. But the most important thing yeah. is, you're able to work together. It changes the it changes the dynamics when you Correct. are very particular about your position. Very good. That's true. Wow, that was so amazing. That was amazing. Um, in my in the, in the neighborhood, nobody knows what I do because I don't tell them. I just simply say I work from home. I work in training because it changes them when they know which you know. It changes when they see your background. It changes the way they 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 actually uh, talk to you. Correct. Okay. You need to be careful. You need to think first, and sometimes you need to look into the details of what you're talking about or communication that you want to tell him because there is something in there that you might, you know, might affect your position, might, you know, might be a cause of termination, in fact. And, you know, exactly. just imagine that. Imagine that. 
imagine so instead of a free way con communication process, conversation and communication instead of a, a free way a free way of uh, expression of ideas and all that all of a sudden the ideas are gone because you're now become more conscious of the way you communicate wow i i was impressed uh i don't know but let me see maybe i can just write my name as well you're my idol i learned a lot from you and that is i don't want to curse myself but i can do it because i know i can do it of course and i believe in that i i respect we respect you know i respect other people because you know opposition is being worked for they really you know hard work for that matter and that position is hard also to achieve. but then again you gave me a great tip today and i will treasure that in the coming days we'll just say me there rene diche <laughs> so mark <laughs> are you there you know, you will you you will see the difference in how people interact with you. When all you, right. You know, okay. So we need to say somewhere. This is all about a lot of learnings. You know, it's just a limitless learning. The brains is just so functioning, and that I think the most important thing for people now is to learn from these experiences. We continue to learn how to learn. Is that true, sir Mark? That's correct. So people that is why. Uh, moving on. Uh, how are you gonna tell us? As the last part of our program this afternoon is learning is a vital and when we learn every day it is a continuous process but we need to learn how to learn it's a different thing but just learning from it correct sir mark okay um there is I, I believe in the saying that you you stop learning the moment you die yeah right? of course so Definitely. there was this you know we grew up in that belief and most people most people grew up in the, because of the education system that from the, the you know by the time you finish college you know that degree holder mentality yeah. you know, the degree holder mentality now i already have a degree right i i uh, you know you're so proud of yourself that you stop learning already in the moment <laughs> you stop learning that degree becomes just a piece of paper right that degree becomes just a piece of paper because that degree is now Correct. just proven that you can achieve and learn more only that at this point in time it is no longer uh what do you call this it's no longer guided because in school all of these things that you learned were forced on you right were forced on you and so you learn because someone tells you to learn correct then it becomes an obligation for most people that they feel so relieved when they graduate that they stop learning that's now. true yeah that's true i think they, they know, oh thanks god it's the end of the road oh my god i can work now <laughs> that right. is so correct okay. so this is okay. so mark this is mindsets am i right yeah. these are all mindsets yeah. but let me just share, share with you share something with you hmm. if if you stop learning and i've seen a lot of my friends uh who went mm -hmm. through that process no you become your value right it decreases the moment you stop learning Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? The moment you start learning, right. stop learning. If mm -hmm. you're just focused about what you have achieved, you will never go, you know, bigger. You will never go places, right? And the secret to that is taking a look at how are you looking at learning, right? How are you looking at learning? And I'm very happy to share with you the concept of the growth mindset, which was based. My next, my next slide, please. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I love this yeah. growth mindset and fixed mindset. Yeah. So, so that you try to take a look at where you are in your attitude towards learning. There's the book that came out by Carol Dweck. Um, she calls uh, the, she talks about the growth mindset. And she talks about the comparison between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. So what she did was they did a study of um, pupils or, or students, elementary school students, and take a look, took a look at what was going on and how, you know, how, how, how uh, they, their attitudes toward learning. And she found out, in fact, in, in, her, in her book, she goes, the, the, the question that she answers is, why is it that, um, what makes others successful and what makes uh, people not successful? Mm -hmm. And then they did a study. Nice right? question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he, he, she says, there are a lot of intelligent people. I, I see it a lot also. There are a lot of intelligent people, but they're not successful. It's true. There are, those, there are those who are not intelligent, but they are successful. But they're very successful. They're millionaires. <laughs> so they, what's the conclusion? What's the conclusion? 
it all comes from the way you look at yourself, mm -hmm. right? And there's a difference between the way you look at a, a fixed mindset and the growth mindset. Wow, it's amazing. So when you look at them, there's just a mm -hmm. few other concepts, but the very, very important concepts of the book. It would be good for mm -hmm. you guys to look in. You can read it, right? Or it's, you know, you can watch the video on YouTube. It's also there, right? So when it comes to skills, a person with a fixed mindset thinks that they are fixed and that you're born with. Is there that in dialogue? Inborn. 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 Right. On the other side, it comes from hard work and can always, can always improve. improve. Right. Mm -hmm. So, how many of your friends, friends, this is a direct question, and also mm. ask you more, how many of you sometimes say, I'm too old to learn? Ah, hindi na, yaman na, hindi ko kaya yan. How many people do you know? You know, uh, I think only old ones, those old ones, titos and titas, maybe aging from 75, 76, but nevertheless, not at all. They're all, they're all, you know, they're all okay. ambitious. They're, they, they believe in learning. In my, in my family, in my cloud, you know. Yeah, but around, I'll make sure you come from the province, and this is a prevailing mindset. You know, the they, province, correct, correct, sir. Successful, but they don't even want to get out of that, you know, the province. So how could <laughs> you learn skills if you're just there? Yes. Right? You know what I'm saying? I learned a lot of these things because I was exposed to the right, you know, the right skills that I need to develop, and I was very willing to learn. So I learned computing all by myself. I didn't learn it in school, right? Because I have to learn it because we were evolving from the from you know from that uh, OHP in the past, right? <laughs> your acetate, your <laughs> the acetates. Okay. So, yeah, I remember those days. <laughs> okay. The other thing also is the way people look at how people look at challenges. With a fixed mindset, they some they avoid that because it could reveal as connected to the uh, connected to the first one. It will reveal a lack of skill. And of course, they tend to give up easily. So when they're forced with a challenge, they look at it and they try to avoid it. But a person with a growth mindset embraces change, challenges, embraces challenges. It, it, you know, it, challenges are part of life. It is an opportunity to grow and it will, they become more persistent. The more the challenge is, the more they actually drive, you know, are driven to, 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 to do it. The more that they, the more challenges they face, you know, they have this feeling of um, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, and then they actually do, they actually do, right? And when they do it, there that defines their success as well, right? That's correct. Yeah. The next one is the mindset over effort. For I the love it. Yeah. For 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 effort. Effort Fixed is very important. Effort. Yeah, unnecessary something that you something do. When you are not good enough. Good enough. So I mean, you meant to say effort can really cover that. Of course. If you take a look at the, the, the other side, like on a growth mindset, right? It is essential in a path to wow. math. That is correct. You just yeah. have to do it. <laughs> yeah. You just have to do it. Very Nike. Very Nike. Just do it. Right? Do it. Yeah. And then most importantly, uh, how people deal with feedback. And I'm, you've seen this. This, ah, is, a this very, is very important, Sir Mark. This is very important. This is very, yeah, this is very, very common. Sometimes, uh, you know, you need to be honest. Sometimes feedback can kill you. Feedback can actually push you down and let you just resign for a job. If, Discourage. If you have a fixed mindset. Because mm -hmm. a person with a fixed mindset gets defensive. Take it personal. Person. Amazing. Wow. Right. And notice but, how, how this person in the fixed mindset column is interconnected, their mindsets are interconnected, right? But on the other side, useful feedback is useful. Uh, I think the Filipinos are not in this level yet because they are defensive. They say, for example, hey, um, <laughs> and then people do not know how to actually give feedback as well. So usually, yeah. uh, I grew up also giving feedback in anger. So I did uh -huh. not understand that when I was younger, right? In, 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 uh, you know what I'm saying? Konting pagkakamali mo, it's a big deal. Because that was the kind that was the feedback mechanism or uh, feedback, the way feedback was given to us when we were young. 
and I hated that when I was young. I could not understand. I could not put it all together. Like, why, why, for example, just breaking a glass is a big deal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm sure you, you you experience a similar, um, you know, similar from old people. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I did, but I, I got fed up. You know, I got fed up, and it, it, it was really an issue. Sorry, I was very, uh, you know, I I also uh, want to share the idea that this doesn't have to be this way. Right. So what I did, right. I started drinking more glasses every time they, they you know, when I break a glass in the day, they're, they're angry at me. Okay, let's break some more. So that, you know, I just want, I just want to make it, um, you know, to make to make the the, the issue and the act of equal, you know, of equal level. A glass of water, a glass, and then all of these uh, bad feedback already coming from the old people. So what I did, okay, since it's so big for you, let's all let's you know, let's just break more glasses. That makes it even. And now you can, you know, you can hit me, you know what I'm saying? And now you can hit me now because it's not justifiable because I broke a whole the entire, you know, entire cabinet of glasses. I think they said that I think is the right way to do it. So that was that was already my mindset when I was a kid. No, I, I could mm -hmm. not understand how people could not express. And then of course later on in life I realized that it's also yeah. where they you know it's it's they learn from what they they were taught and they thought you know they thought that was a still you know applicable to the day and age right so now you notice that because of the millennials millennials like feedback because when they were kids there were degrees of feedback right there were degrees of feedback and then they, they had an assignments like okay teacher did i do well today so the kind of the different that, that, that mindset is now different so we are now becoming more open to feedback because we know feedback is important for us to progress. And most, and lastly, uh, yes, I, I've seen this happen also, very toxic Filipino, uh, very toxic Filipino mindset. When it comes to setbacks, they blame others. Most of the time, yeah. <laughs> and- <laughs> That's a big just, reality. You just, said, you just said it earlier, they resign. They resign. Yeah, because they get I'm discouraged. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Well, when, when there's a setback, right? I was just reading something earlier uh, when I saw that on, on, on Twitter, or was it on LinkedIn? So I saw that on LinkedIn and uh, said, I've been, uh, I've been fired, I've resigned so many times, but I still get going. Because again, your mindset of a setback, it's just a setback. You'll get back on track, right? There may be a, a slight delay in, the, in, you know, in, the, in, in what you want to happen in your life, but like I mentioned in my favorite, it takes a process. It takes, takes a process. process. Okay? Right. So when it comes to setback, it's a wake up call because say for example, see, use it positively. Why was I fired? Maybe there are six things that I still need to improve on myself. That could be an attitude, right? That could be a working attitude, that could be a behavior, or that could be a lack of skill. And once you've identified that lack of skill, say for example, you're unemployed. A lot of people say, oh my God, we're going to lose our jobs because of the pandemic. I've just presented to you guys today that there's a lot of opportunities that this pandemic is simply a setback. Simply a setback. Use it as a wake-up call to become more relevant, to develop the skills that are more relevant. I've shown you what those are, and hopefully we'll be able to, you know, you'll be able to use it for you to change your mindset as, you know, things are happening around us. So that thank you so was, much, That so, was great. That was definitely great. Wow. Right. And, and I, uh, always, I always end with this one. Yeah. Imagine with your mind, believe with all your heart, and achieve with all your might. All your might. Wow. That was uh, wonderful. Thoughts coming from you. So imagine with your mind, with all, believe with all your heart, and achieve with all your might. In simple, in simpler terms, Sir Mark, you're saying you're saying that. Oh, sorry. Saying about. But about Iba, actually, that's my that was my uh, tagline when I uh, went no. into politics. Iba, imagine, believe, Iba. achieve. <laughs> Iba, wow, what's amazing? Iba ka talaga. <laughs> yeah. Actually, my, my, my tagline was Iba to. Okay, so, so imagine, imagine, believe, achieve. achieve. Yes, that's amazing. If you, it, if you can imagine it and you believe it, you will achieve it. That's true. That's right? Mr. Mark Barikawa. Yeah, imagine something, imagine something, 
and then believe that it will happen and then you can achieve it because when it's always so strong it was so strong your belief is so strong that you will achieve it you'll do everything to improve on yourself to upscale yourself connect with the right people work with the right people and then you'll get there you're iba mr mark barikawa <laughs> wow amazing what did i say I always, I, you know, I, I don't know, but I'm always amazed with every time that you present because you said imagining. It's always crystallizing in my mind, Sir Mark, that when you said it, when you just mentioned it, I saw vision. I saw these things that I'm in mind and I saw other things being achieved. It's true for us to be able to really make all these things possible. Believing is very important to our heart, right? And for you to achieve all of this, you just have to do and listen and sometimes just continue to learn all the time and apply it implementation i think is very important as well so mark right. both of this yeah, because and it is very important. you don't have to look far you don't have 1000 subscribers you imagine <laughs> yeah, thank, you. thank you so much you <laughs> thank you so lot, much right? <laughs> you believe in your heart that you can do it now yeah it's working for you. I never imagine, yeah, truly. I would like to say again, thank you to all my subscribers and, and to all the friends who supported SMR, especially you. And I never expected, never, uh, never. I imagine, of course, that I can reach it because I believe in it. And now I'm achieving something. Iba talaga. I'll use Iba. Ladies and gentlemen, a big, big round of applause and acknowledgement to my very good mentor, a motivator, a very good friend of us. One of our executives in Philly Westland Incorporated, Mr. Mark Barikawa. Sir Mark, thank you so much. I'm so delighted having you in my blog today. Hope we inspire people. Anything you would like to say more, Sir Mark, to our viewers, to your friends listening? After this, it will be yeah, I, think yeah. I think I've said, I've shared a lot of insights, and hopefully, you guys picked one or two uh, insights and ideas that I've shared with you. And hopefully, it kind of you know helps you look at life differently. Because it's really very important that you try to embrace what's happening to us right now. Uh, stress not yourself, because like I've mentioned, life is a process. Life is a process. We we are th we are in this uh, pandemic because we have to go through it. But we always come out stronger. You know, we've seen the breakdown of leadership. You know, we've seen the yeah. One of the things that I also would like to share is that the pandemic has shown us that we need better leaders. We need people who can adapt. To the, the changing situations so what this pandemic would have achieved all over the world is that then in the next choice of people to lead the country that stereotype is gone all right it's totally gone because we've seen that you know even america for example we've seen how it's failing their the, the government leader is failing them and a lot of people have reached that in fact that was one of the things that was discussed in the ceo forum i attended last week and the person was, you know, the speaker was a very great speaker, an author, and a book writer. He actually did, did not mince words in saying that the U.S. leader is doing a good, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not helping out in the pandemic. And it's not, you know, it's not just there. It's in the others as well. And we've seen what type of leaders will emerge in the future. Like you've seen, um, you've seen of all of these people, leaders in uh, Asia and in, 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 for example, particularly in New Zealand, that these are the new breed of leaders that will lead us to the, to the future, to the next level. So the type of leadership has changed. It's shifted already. Remember, I was talking to you about the um, what do you call this? The, the types of leadership in the you know when I, I did the the first talk with the with these people, I said the 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 type of leaders in the future are changing now, and this pandemic has just proven it. That those theories that I shared with you back in last year is happening now because they actually see it happening in the world. So there's now going to be a change, a shift in the paradigms of leadership. In this, the next, next, you know, next election, I'm telling you this: that not just in the, not just the Philippines, but all over the world, there will be a shift. Definitely, leader that they will. And to be shift. You have to, you have to, to, to navigate through this. You simply just have to embrace it. Don't fight it. Just accept it. Move forward. Take, you know, take the best opportunity, most of the opportunities presented to us. And um, I hope I was able to open your eyes to these opportunities that this pandemic despite it, is offering us. Thank you so wow. much, Ray. Thank you so much. It is my gratitude, Sir Mark Barikawa. Thank you for gracing my channel, The Mind Gears, and for continued support you gave to me. Thank you for your cooler waters, the fluids that comes in your mind. It's really so amazing. Just press in, press and then touch that they only here, only here in my channel, The Mind Gears. Thank you so much, Sir Mark, and looking forward to seeing more of you again. 
God bless you and stay healthy. All right, so there we go. Maraming maraming salamat, Sir Mark. Hindi, hindi ko makakalimutan ang panahon na binigay mo sa akin ngayon. And I would like to say hi to all the viewers that I still have. I would like to say hi to a good friend, of course. Hi, the ghost. Hello, Sir Renz. Hi. I hope you're watching right now. I would like to say as well, hi, also watching to us, Jenny Faye Gyanan. Hi, Faye. Hi, Sir Renz. Thank you for having this topic. Very timely. And of course, uh, Shane Son, thank you for watching. Great talk. We have uh, Shane Son saying, great talk. I'm listening while driving. Thank you so much, my friend. And to a lot more friends watching my channel. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. And since this is my first ever episode, I would like to, okay, I'm managing it, okay. Well, I said thank you. And I hope to be back again in my next live streaming, sharing you some live talks only here in the Mind Gears. A Mind Gears is a compilation of sales tips to keep, motivation, testimonials, lifestyles, food, and events. Thank you so much for watching me. Thank you so much to so all the viewers and subscribers who actually continue to support me every day. I'll be back in next week, every Saturday in the afternoon. This is Mind Gears, your TV, your perspective. And I would like to say thank you so much for all the support you gave me. I have now 1,020 subscribers and hoping for more. May God help us all and peace. Keep safe, everyone. Make sure that you're safe at home and that your family is doing great. Just continue to pray. As Sir, Sir Mark shared a while ago, just imagine the future that you want to be and just believe in that because one day in your life, you will just notice, wake up early in the morning, that everything is there. You just have to apply. You just have to learn it. You just, you just have to pray every day. Maraming maraming salamat sa isang magandang hapon. And by that, I would say thank you and God bless us all. This is Rain of the Mind Gear saying goodbye and see you again. See you next week. Bye, Sir Mark. And God bless you. Bye-bye and good night to everyone. Please subscribe to my channel. If you like my live stream today, please subscribe, like, and ring a bell. Bye-bye. I'll see you again.